clay that has a very high percentage of water and high moisture content is called slip when it becomes liquid. So here in this container we've been dissolving water and some clay together and so we've got this slip mixture in here where the clay has a lot of water added to it it's like very fine mud there we go, very liquid and slip can be useful for attaching pieces of clay to each other it's kind of like the glue that holds everything together but clay in a more refined state uh, can also be used for slip casting and slip casting is a process where liquid slip is poured into a mold and then it's allowed to solidify so here we have this duck you can see it still hasn't been fired this is actually bone dry clay right now it's pale gray and brittle this duck was made in a mold using the slip casting process so here I have this Laguna White Star gallon of slip that is slip fully liquid and this has a nice uniform consistency with very high water content here we have the fresh clay bucket and I keep my fresh clay for classroom use in a large Rubbermaid container so that we can close the lid on it and keep the moisture trapped inside of here so the the fresh clay is typically um, very easy to to shape to sculpt uh, you can cut it you can rip chunks off of it uh, you can leave indentations and make texture in it that it's easy to work with and to change its shape I shouldn't have to struggle with it and uh, we toss our excess scraps into this bucket and take a shovel either to scoop clay out of here for a project or to chop up some of the clay that we're getting rid of so we'll cut it up into small pieces because the more surface area that clay has the faster it will dissolve and absorb moisture so chop up our clay give it a little care with some moisture sprayed down into here and uh, that clay should maintain that nice consistency if we give it the moisture and we seal it up when it's in use leather hard clay has its name leather hard because its consistency feels it's much like tanned leather so if I have this slab of leather hard clay you can see that it can be flexed somewhat but it also holds its form here you can see my leather hard clay and if I flex the clay it has developed these sort of uh, crackly marks I call it like elephant skin because it has all these tension cracks because it's, it allows me to flex it but it doesn't have the plasticity of the soft clay that has lots of water in it so it's so dry that it just crackles other hard can be shaped and it will stand on its own and hold the shape that you gave it so see that it's not going to flop over However, it developed some pretty big cracks when I flexed it like that. Here it's standing on its own. It holds its shape. It's not going to collapse from gravity. It's not going to flatten back to how it was. It holds the shape that you give it. Another quality of leather hard clay is it feels like a block of cheese, that it's soft enough to shave and scrape, uh, but hard enough that it makes small shavings that come loose as you scrape it. So it's like shredding a block of cheese. 
Here you see the little pieces. Bone dry clay is completely dry. All of the water has evaporated out of the clay, leaving it hard, brittle, and easily snapped and broken. If you're using a low fire stoneware B mix like I have here, it's a pale gray in color compared to the darker color when there is water present in the clay. Bone dry clay can be very dusty, so be sure to wear a dust mask if you're doing any shaving or carving. The clay can easily be scratched and carved into which makes it ideal for smoothing and scraping out imperfections before you get to the firing stage. Here you can see the powder residue drifting off of the clay as I scrape at the surface. Bisque clay has been fired in the kiln, so it's been raised to a very high temperature, a specific temperature for a set amount of time, and that changes the clay so that it is stronger and holds its shape. So it's now in a permanent form. Our B-mix clay here after it comes out of the kiln is bright white in color. It's no longer gray. However, this is a low fire clay so even after it's been in the kiln, it will absorb water because it has a porous surface. It hasn't been fired to a hot enough temperature to vitrify it and make it reach a state of maturity. These projects are very strong. They're not brittle. In fact, very strong. Um, like if I take this chip, it's, this is thin, and things that are thin are usually more fragile, but even this, I can drop it from a certain height and with quite a bit of uh, force when it lands and it did not break. But really, really thin pieces can be broken uh, with a strong amount of force applied, so I might be able to break that, um, but you can see I had to use the pliers to apply the right amount of strength and it was very, very thin to begin with. So they can be broken, uh, but thicker pieces are much stronger. Glaze fired is the final stage in the ceramics process. So you need a piece that's been fired to bisque in the kiln and then we take glaze and paint the glaze to the bisque, the bare bisque surface. So you can see here this box is in progress and it has the white bare bisque here, it's been cleaned off, and the glaze is being applied to the surface. Uh, it starts as a liquid uh, but it dries very quickly into sort of a chalky, powdery appearance. The glaze tends to be kind of dusty and pale pastel in color, but when it's fired in the kiln, the glaze becomes bright, vibrant, glossy, and an intense color, if the color is uh, supposed to be intense. So we can see here, I have a, a bowl full of samples of glaze chips. So the glazes, when they're painted and fired, they are glossy and smooth to the touch because the glaze basically liquefies in the kiln and then it cools with this glossy surface. So there's many different colors of glazes that you can choose and each one looks different after it's fired compared to what it might look like before it's been fired when it's still pale and chalky. And some glazes are just one color, uh, but other glazes have a combination of ingredients. Uh, many of them have crystalline chunks in the glaze, and those crystalline chunks 
when they melt in the glaze create some really spectacular effects. Here we have some pieces that have been glaze fired. So you see it has a luster, a shiny surface. It's smooth to the touch uh, when it's applied on a smooth surface. If it's been textured in the sculpture, then the glaze will sort of ooze down into the grooves. Sometimes it will actually obscure your carvings if your carvings are not deep enough. But uh, glossy, smooth, when it's been applied correctly, it's an opaque color. If it's been applied thin with not enough coats, you'll see streaks in the glaze. With glazing and glaze-fired pieces, you want to always make sure that if it is um, food you will be eating off of the project, you want to make sure that you're using a non-toxic dinnerware safe glaze. Some glazes have chemicals in them that can leach into your food over time and with use and that can poison you and be very toxic. So choose glazes appropriate for the project, whether it's just decorative or whether it has a functional use. And always be careful with handling your glazes based on the ingredients in them.